In this video, you will learn about Drosera. Drosera is a security automation protocol, and you probably have not heard of this kind of thing before, because it's quite a new layer of security that is emerging to kind of help out the audits, the bug bounties, and the alerting systems that we already have in place. So what does a security automation protocol add to this three? It's like a framework for creating and executing some kind of automated actions in response to emergencies or some kind of events. And those emergencies or events are things that are happening on chain on Ethereum because Drosera is Ethereum native. And if all you needed was a simple overview of Drosera, that was it. And if you'd like to get involved already right now and earn rewards for contributing to Ethereum security, there is an early supporters form that you can fill out. It is found at the bottom of the website and I'll also leave the link in the description. And if you'd like to learn a bit more of the technical details, funding and so on, keep listening. This is kind of very crypto aligned, which I think is a good direction, but I also think it would be a kind of a good addition to the existing layer of security. It does not mean it will replace audits. It is likely to be just an extra thing. And why do we even need this extra thing, <laughs> extra layer of security? Well, I probably don't need to remind you of any hacks. If we want to even start talking about Web3 and DeFi be on par with Web2 and uh, TradFi, then you got to really make sure that you are able to handle their complexity. And what do you mean by handling complexity? I mean, I mean, yeah, I mean by handling complexity that you need to be able to handle the risk that comes with it. Because any extra thing that you add to your code that may make the functionality very cool and very convenient and easy to use for the user, it also adds so many more loopholes for the hackers to exploit. So audits and bug bounties can kind of work on this level to try and find any kind of loopholes already in the code. However, what you can also do on top of that is in case something actually was missed, what are you going to do on chain? So it's easier to understand on the example. So let's take the Nomad Bridge hack, um, the infamous Nomad Bridge hack for $200 million that happened in August. So the attack started happening and it happened not just like this. It happened over about two hours in 960 transactions and over 1100 individual withdrawals. And everybody says how chaotic it was and how insane it was. And I agree, it's insane, a very big and like kind of crazy thing that happened. But on the other hand, was it actually so non-preventable if it happened for like such a considerable amount of time? Thinking about this in this light raises a question, shouldn't there be a system that executes some kind of plan B, like evacuation plan, in case some unusual activity starts happening? Shouldn't there be a system that executes something once the first 5 million are stolen, uh, or we really have to wait until 200 million are stolen? So, I mean, probably we should, right? So that's what Dressera developers also thought and that's what they are bringing to the developers with their protocol. I already alluded to the principles of how Dressera works a few times. However, let's put it all together and get a bit more high level still, uh, but into the technical side of uh, the inner workings. So there are the two main things you need to know about it's operators and traps and traps because like Drosera is the plan that it's uh, bugs if you haven't heard of it you know it looks like uh, a very nice pretty flower and then the bug comes and it's actually a trap and the trap catches that bug so that's kind of the <laughs> the main idea behind these traps as well so just thinking of this analogy can it probably help you visualize it the trap is a smart contract in which you define the emergency conditions that you need to act upon. So for example, going back to that Nomad bridge hack, if there is a $3 million just wiped out from your protocol in like three blocks, then it sounds like an emergency condition. Maybe it's not necessarily malicious, but at least it is something you should pay attention to. So you define this kind of condition of like X number of tokens or millions of dollars drained from your protocol. It's that's very simplified. And then those traps are also watching on-chain activity. So traps themselves are stored off-chain, so therefore they are not visible to the public or therefore to the hackers as well. So those are off-chain things that are watching on-chain data for these emergency conditions to be met. 
And if those emergency conditions are met, then those traps raise an alert to the operators. Those are the nodes responsible for executing the on-chain actions that are defined in the trap contract. So every new block, the operators evaluate the trap's emergency conditions. And in case those are met, they go ahead and do the on-chain actions and perform them that were predefined previously. And they do it because they are decentralized, so those are separate servers or people running those operator nodes. They need to agree upon consensus to go ahead and execute those on-chain actions. They earn passive rewards for just securing the network. However, they also have an additional incentive, like a bonus reward, that um, is happening, that is given to them in case their submission for the exploit is accepted by the Dressera Trap Manager. The logic itself is pretty simple and elegant, and however, I want to emphasize the point that the traps themselves that contain the emergency conditions are stored off-chain, so that the hacker cannot access those at any point, because if they could access those and see them on-chain, that would not really make sense, because that would defeat the purpose, the hacker can just go around them and make sure that their attack does not fall under those emergency conditions. So that's clear. And the only question left is where do these operators come from? They come from Eigenlayer. If you haven't heard of Eigenlayer previously, it's a set of smart contracts that allows Ethereum stakers to restake their ETH to then validate other decentralized applications that require a network of validators for an actively validated service. So with Eigenlayer, instead of going ahead and developing their own trust network as developers, the DApp developers just have to deploy their own application and rely on Eigenlayer to provide the validator service for them. And uh, the thing here, the beautiful kind of synergy that's happening is that those validators are already Ethereum aligned because they are stakers of ETH and they are just restaking their ETH to support the security of the applications that are running on Ethereum. So it kind of just reusing, um, it is like reusing the security of Ethereum for the applications that are running on Ethereum. If you want to learn more a bit about this, there is like a 10 minute talk at ETH Denver from the CTO of Dressera. His name is Boba. He's more known as Boba, but I'll talk a bit about the team later. Um, but I'm going ahead uh, with the funding because they recently collected a one and a half million dollar funding round and there was a participation from a bunch of capitals. That's why I'm reading. Um, so if you can see, there is Anagram, Arrington Capital, UD, HC, Comfy Capital, Bot High Ventures, Metamatic, Base DAO, Asymmetric, Zeal Capital, Everstake, Zero One Node, Marion Ventures, Infinite Capital, and Annex Gen, and a bunch of individual investors as well. So there is a very big list and the amount is not huge and um, that's still understandable because it's still a pre-seed round. Pre-seed, what does it mean? It means it's very early. So the project is not yet live and it's going to go into testnet in Q2 2024. So watch out for the testnet if you're a developer and you would like to participate. And actually it's very important that uh, Dressera is fully written in Solidity. So if you're even a beginner dev, it's going to be very easy for you to work with Dressera because all you need to know is Solidity, no extra stuff. I'll go over to the team, as I promised. We have the three main team members, the CEO, the CTO and the founding engineer. I already mentioned Boba, also known as Sam, who is the CTO of the company. He started off building flashbots and MEV bots on Polygon and then went on developing monitoring systems for Datsum and Cosmos. And Kratos, who is a founding engineer who is previously coming from BitGo, where he was also a lead engineer. And the CEO of the company, Fernando, is coming previously from NSA, where he was at the cybersecurity department. So it kind of very topical and explains a lot why he is building this project. And there is actually also the fourth member, Richard, who is a co-founder and the CSO at Dressera. And Richard is coming from Opal Network previously. And that's all I have for you about Dressera. I'm just personally quite excited for new security stuff start popping up in crypto because, well, evidence shows that we really need it. Um, and yeah, thank you very much for watching and see you in the next one.